535. Um, welcome everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I do need a <clears throat> motion to approve tonight's agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carrying none, the motion carries. Okay, this meeting was called by Trustee Bain and Trustee Jones. Um, so would you like to start off? Yep. Okay. Um, so there was, we received a complaint from a patron that a book had been pulled um, recently and um, I want to know why, I want to know how, I want to know exactly what happened because it was said that it was a board decision and it was not a board decision. Not a single one of the four of us had anything to do with the, the situation. Okay, but I want to know. All right, Bob, do you have anything that you want to chime in? Well, uh, the, the reason uh, I asked for it is because you know, we received an email that went into a lot of detail about the book having been pulled. Uh, without a lot of explanation as to why that took place. I, I uh, thought we had policy or procedure uh, that was to be followed when uh, somebody you know, had a concern or complaint about a piece of uh, curriculum material or whatever. Correct. Uh, you know, was that followed or no, or what happened? Okay, well what happened was I received several complaints. Several? Several from parents uh, in a sixth grade class at Lakeland Middle School um, that they were their children were being uh, had been given this book the truth is told by Mason Buttle but none of the parents had approved it it wasn't on their syllabus they they're like they they were concerned with some of the content so I sent um, Lisa and Lynn a pat and Lynn an email but it was addressed to Lynn because um, she's in charge of the supplemental curriculum, and my email simply stated, hey Lynn, please let me know when this book was approved. It is apparently being taught in a sixth grade ELA class at LMS, taught by Miss Chatterton. Several parents are upset due to the homosexual content and no opt-in form being provided. Additionally, Miss Chatterton's sixth period social studies class a presentation about Canada being the third country to normalize LGBTQ was presented. I'd like to know if this presentation was part of the curriculum being used for the social studies class and when it was approved. Best regards. That was my email to Lynn. The next day, I received a phone call from Lynn following up on my email. Lynn and I had a very collaborative conversation because um, Lynn was concerned. She went. The teachers all followed procedure, which was send out a syllabus. What happened in Miss Chatterson's class, from my understanding, is that because of the excitement from the other two teachers, um, she chose instead of doing the book Hatchet, I believe, or Hatch, um, to do this book. Unfortunately, she didn't send out anything to the parents saying, I'm changing this book. Uh, will you sign off on it? So when I asked specifically, you know, when was this book approved by cur supplemental curriculum? Um, she said, well, it was our novel sets. You know, it was grandfathered in because it had been in the district for many years. And I, I questioned that because the book didn't even get published until 2018. So I didn't know how long it really had been in our district, but I felt that maybe it should have come through the curriculum process. And Lynn said, yeah, none of, there's a lot, she didn't say none, she said there's a lot of our novel sets that have not gone through the curriculum process. So she and I discussed further at the fact that this book had not been through the curriculum process, and so through our discussion, um, Lynn said she felt like it might be best to just sort of pull it and table it, go through the curriculum process, and would I be okay with that? And I, I expressed concern because the other two teachers 
had already planned for it. They already sent out their syllabus and parents had already signed off. And in that discussion, we were talking about the fact that, you know, these other two teachers would probably be okay if it got, you know, pulled and sent through the curriculum process, etc. And because my thought was I didn't want to put additional work on these other two teachers not knowing what goes into their um, curriculum planning for novel sets. But at the end of our discussion, uh, it was decided that the book could be tabled, run through the supplemental process, bring it to the board for an understanding, which it was slated to go on the agenda for next week's meeting. Because unfortunately, this happened, my email to Lynn was on March 12th. On March 13th, when we had the conversation, we had a meeting, but I had no way of bringing it up during the meeting because it wasn't on the agenda. <clears throat> So I figured it would just all get handled at next week's meeting. So that is what happened. Um, it, there was no assertion of power by me saying, pull that book, it's horrid. My whole thing was I just wanted to know when it had been approved. And then based on that, <clears throat> if it needed to be brought farther, then we would hold conversation about it at the April meeting because there was nothing that could be done in March. So that's what happened. Um, it's my understanding that book is actually on the supplemental curriculum. It's coming up on our April meeting um, with the comments for approval or not approval. So that's what's happened. <clears throat> Can we get a verification? The, the um, conversation um, that Lynn and I had immediately following her conversation with Michelle was similar to what Michelle just said, but um, Lynn definitely walked away from the conversation with the understanding that Michelle was asking her to table the book. Don't we normally uh, try to resolve matters such as this at the lowest possible level? Were the people who complained to you, were they given the uh, direction to go back and talk to the teacher, talk to the principal, talk to the superintendent before it ever got to the board? I did not give them that direction, no. Because yeah, my isn't, question... Isn't that our normal yeah. uh, protocol and those kind of things? Mm -hmm. Yes. There... Um, Three of the parents, is my understanding, had asked for another book. And my question to Lynn was simply trying to understand when was it approved, because I didn't know. That was my question to her. It wasn't about pulling the book or even tabling the book. It was understanding when was the book approved. And then being told, oh, it's been in the district for years. It was grandfathered in. And that, that was, I mean, I read you the email I sent Lynn. Appreciate that. But there were a lot of conversations that unfortunately we don't have record of. And even if it was a collaborated effort, you did not have the authority to do that, to collaborate. You're not an administrator. You do not have the authority to make a decision. I have to stop you there for, no, excuse me, but you're breaking the law. 74206 specifically says if you're going to reprimand a public elected official, it must be done in uh, executive session. Okay. And the other thing is this, too, is that's fine, but the whole thing got blown out of proportion. I ended up sick. We received email from very upset parents. I answered them and said, I will find out from the superintendent what is going on. I got too sick to do it. In the meantime, when I started feeling better, we got this email that was totally in left field. Then your email came, and the next thing I know, nobody can say anything because we're having this meeting. Here's the thing. Nobody should have ever came to Michelle to begin with, the chair of the board. They do it continuously. Come to the chair. They want the chair to make a decision based upon the board. You're right, and it should never happen. So my request to administration is quit asking the chair to do your job. Make the decision. If you have something for the board to do, bring it to the board. That's the thing. I'm sorry, but you know we've sat here for five years and we're going backwards, backwards, back to the same thing. Throw the board under the bus. The book was out there. The book should have never been out there. It did not go through the proper channels. 
The community found out about it. They got upset. So it should have been handled properly and it should have not been out there because it was never approved by the board. And if we have upset parents, it's our job to halt, figure out what happened and fix it. And th that didn't happen. You know, it turned into this big disaster. Well, it shouldn't have been made. It shouldn't have been a decision that was made on the phone to uh, by anybody agree. to to pull the book. It should have if the book was going to be pulled, it should have been pulled by the administrators. And if Agreed. you're being asked to make decisions, well, my understanding have it come to the entire board. All you all you have to do is remind them that you are not going to make a decision that it needs to come to the board. If it, if it's something that is a decision that has to be made. In all fairness, I thought I was agreeing with Lynn because she had said she felt it appropriate to pull it, just table it for right now, send it through curriculum, and bring it to the whole board. And I said, yes, it all needs to come to the board. So that got construed as me saying, pull the book. And I did not because I felt that the other two teachers had done their due diligence and had their right to teach that book given that the parents had all signed off on it. What did come out in our collaborative conversation was I did ask, are we making sure there's enough information on the syllabus that's going to parents? And Lynn said, you know, I, I don't know. I have no idea. So we'll figure that out and go from there. It was just, in my opinion, a collaborative conversation. What I hear you saying is that I shouldn't have had the conversation as is, is what Trustee is. Grissom is saying. And that's fine, I can stop having conversations because nine times out of 10, they're calling me for some form of guidance and I'm usually directing them nine times out of 10 back to legal counsel um, and I'm not making decisions for the whole board. This was kind of a one-off situation and it was based on the fact that I inquired about when the book was approved. That's all I asked. So, so when you when you made that inquiry and you found that it, had, it seemingly had not been approved, mm -hmm. although there's an indication that it was a grandfather. Right. Okay. So once you had that information, what would be the next appropriate step? I said I think uh, my comment to Lynn was I think we need to bring it to the board and make them aware of this and see what they want to do. Because well, that, Lynn's thought that, was, since we have so many grandfathered in sets, that maybe that's not appropriate. Maybe we need to start running them, you know, three, four, five sets at a time. I'm not sure the golden number, but running it through supplemental so that the board can approve it because the board's responsibility is to approve the curriculum. And that was another component of the fact that, okay, well, in the April board meeting, we'll have that discussion with the board and see what the board wants to do. That was what I said with her. I didn't say we're doing this. I didn't say we're changing it. I said it sounds like a good idea, but let's let's let the whole board weigh in on how they want to move forward with this. And in all actuality, the initial, very initial email came March 12th at almost nine o'clock at night. And it took what, two or three days to get completely blown out of proportion, twisted around, and here we are. Yeah. There was no time to do anything. There was- So you, you, you got an email? Or yeah, or? From, uh, from a parent who actually, um, and I answered her back, I said, let me hunt this down, let me find out, sorry this happened, blah, 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 blah. Um, yes, and that parent named the other parents with their permission in the email, and they were very upset about the book. Yes, they did. Did you get an email today? I was just looking, I don't think so. Oh, I got one from Randy. I didn't answer it. The only, the the only email I got was the one that I forwarded <clears throat> so that all the board knew what was going on. Yeah, but so that's I, it. I, I, oh. You know, we haven't had the privilege of seeing that other email, so. We well, nobody had a privilege of doing it. We this person said they the emailed a, a dozen discussion. people, but I never got an email. No. Did you? Did you? Anybody else get an email? From what? Well, this person said they emailed over a dozen people in the school district, and they got no response. So. I haven't seen that one at all. 
That was the, the follow up email, right? No, this was this is the first one of three twenty. This is the only one I got three twenty one, and then the next one was three twenty one from Lisa and Randy about asking why I got pulled. But the first one. Yeah, was, that was the next thing I heard yeah. about. Well, but this one says they emailed a dozen <laughs> people in the district and they got no response back. Well, we've had the conversation about. How many book sets do. And how, and how we should respond to emails. And I've <clears throat> generally had the understanding that we don't respond to emails unless we respond collectively. Is that uh, true? Not correct? Respond collectively? In other words, the board speaks with one voice. One, one member of this board can't be responding to emails with one set of ideas and somebody else with a different set of ideas. My response to the parent was simply that, you know, I didn't know this was going on and I would look into it for them. Yeah, and it was a constituent inquiry. It wasn't a board, what's the board going to do about this? It was a hey, what do we do about this? I said, I don't know what you're talking about, so let me find out, but then it was too late, you know? Well, so well, Once again, uh, you know, the only, the only safe response there, I think, is to refer them back to the teacher, the principal, the superintendent. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, that's how we get tangled up in these kind of things, I think. Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, well, I didn't think that anything had gotten <clears throat> super tangled. Right. Because it was all supposed to be coming to the April board meeting because I wasn't able to do anything about it at the March one. So um, the, the only email I saw was one from a, a, a parent who was very upset that the book had been pulled. Right. I saw that one email as well. Yeah, but well, I based so my inquiries was, uh, on the was, other uh, emails. Aggressive that enough that they left us wondering what in the world is going on here. Mm -hmm. And you all would have been brought up to speed <laughs> next week, but you're brought up to speed this week. So I guess uh, maybe it brings up uh, uh, another point, and that is, you know, if we have curriculum materials out there that are being used by teachers with the understanding that they have been approved either at by current board or previous boards or whatever, mm -hmm. but haven't been approved, where are in the world are we on this? Are we going to have mm -hmm. to go back and, and sort through every single piece of material? Well, that's how many book sets question? do we have out there that oh, haven't been 368 approved? 368 books are on our protected list, K through 12. So when we started the supplemental curriculum process, this board made the decision that the things that had been approved by the prior board right. were going to stand. We just, from that point forward, we started bringing the rest of the books. Right. Um, so this is one of those books. Um, and we do have a process in place. So to Michelle's point, the teacher um, didn't, she made a change mid-year about which book she wanted to use, and she did not provide the permission to the parents. Um, the process should have been that, that that teacher stop, send the permission slip, allow parents to opt in to the book, and then uh, for those who had concerns, they um, could put together uh, alternative assignments. Um, and I think there were four parents who um, mm -hmm. opted out. Yes. Um, but, um, and then the other two teachers were ready to start the book. They had not yet started. Um, but they were ready to start the following week, and um, and then they were, they should have been allowed to continue. But they were not. Right. So, which. And that's again, just based on our process. It's a problem right? because you now you have two teachers who followed appropriate protocol, mm -hmm. and are suddenly said, "You can't do this. You can't do this." You know the, that is a terrific undermining of. Mm -hmm morale and credibility yeah. with respect to the board and the relationship with the teaching staff. 
And I see that as a major concern, that it would, we need to avoid getting into these kind of situations where that happens. Right, but it all happened because of miscommunication, Bob, because you had two sets of conversations happening and nobody was communicating. You guys were hearing one thing, we got an email from something else, and then these guys were having another con. I mean, the whole thing happened because of miscommunication. And you're, and you're right, if they were already in the midst of it, if the parents already signed off on it, that is the procedure, right? That, that's how it goes. Right. Um, this book, though, if it was not published till 2018, I would have been on the board to approve it. It was never approved, guaranteed. We'd, we'd, it was published in 2018. Right. I took my seat in 2019. 2020. Well, okay, I was here in November of 2019. I was at multiple meetings before that. There is no notes of any book sets being approved by the board that was here prior to myself. And then COVID happened. So I think we have a lot out there. The only thing we're gonna have to do is as they come up, we'll have to deal with them and everybody needs to calm down. Like it, that's the whole thing is both sides jump all the way to the, you know, to the flame. Instead of letting whomever, the teacher, the principal, the superintendent, find out what, what's going on. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's what happened here. You know, it, it, it was, like telephone, and, and unfortunately, here we are. But I, I don't, I think that, I believe the process has worked this far. You know, I think this is really the first major hiccup we've seen, you know. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, the teachers that already were, had the signed sheets and all that, I mean, you know, that, is unfortunate. I, that's not a good place to be for sure. The, uh, the, the complaints that you received, did, did, did they specify what the, what the language was that they were complaining to? Um, I can forward the email to you. It was, to tell you the truth, I was, like I said, I was extremely sick when I got it. And I breezed through it. I understood they were very upset. There were multiple parents, supposedly, that were upset. Um, <coughs> And they were mainly upset because they said the, the one thing, and I'm sorry, I broke my glass on the way here, so I can't really read. The main thing was how, you know, how did this book get approved? We didn't know about it, you know, blah, blah, blah kind of thing in, in a slideshow. They said they were, they were just wondering how it got approved and why why or when it was approved is what the what the question was so uh, and why weren't they given a permission slip or whatever to why weren't they notified about the book it's, it's <coughs> the primary basis of the complaint about this two two dad thing no they never brought that up i don't i never i never knew nothing about no two dad thing until we got the other email that Randy wanted to know what what's going on. Uh -huh. No, they never never brought that up. They said, uh, "Oh, I take that back. Hold on." They said there are some pictures of the book, and the daughter let her know that there are uh, two dads in the novel. So I guess they she did notice it, but I didn't read it thoroughly. I just skimmed over the email and. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I got it. I this, didn't know it, This email about. is mad because it got pulled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's the one I got. Okay. I think that's the one that ran forward. Right. This yeah. Is, this this is right. Two dads so that we would all know what was going on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just want to read. Well, well, um, it's pretty harmless. I, you, you know, let me tell you something. I had two dads. Me too. I me had too. two fathers. Does that make me a bad person? Yeah, I think a lot of people I hope had not. two dads. <laughs> you know, I had a father and I had a stepfather, and I had a relationship with both of them at the same time. Yeah. And this paragraph is talking about two dads, one who lives somewhere and one who lives somewhere else, which could have been exactly the same situation that I grew up with. Right. So I'm not sure why that's to be complained about. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I haven't I don't even know. looked at the book. Like I said, you know, I was 
got the email and here we are at Dog River. I want to read uh, part of our policy. I just, this, because this, this is my concern. Uh, board policy 1100 in part reads, all trustees have the opportunity to participate on an equal basis. Official action by board members must occur at a duly called and legally conducted meeting convening to make a decision or to deliberate towards a decision on any matter. Individual members of the board have official status only when acting formally as members of the board while in session or when specifically entrusted by the board to carry out specific assignments. The board shall not be bound in any way by any action or statement on the part of an individual board member except when such action or statements are in accordance with specific instruction <coughs> from the board. All commitments of the board shall be made during regular or special meetings. That was policy 1100. Policy 1240 reads in part, each member is obligated to it. Oh, sorry, that's not the part. The, the authority of individual trustees is limited to participating in actions taken by the board as a whole when legally in session. Trustees shall not assume responsibilities of administrators or other staff members. The board or staff shall not be bound by any action taken or statement made by an individual trustee except when such statement or action is pursuant to specific instructions and official action taken by the board. I don't think anybody that's disagrees here, so it sounds to me though you're assuming that that's what happened, that the chair gave direct action to the assistant superintendent to pull the book is what you're telling me. Whether about. it was specifically taking that action or even working in collaboration with the administrators which so she's lying she's lying no 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 that's, no, that's not Ramona it's not no let me talk no because I she said she it was a decision made in collaboration that was her first statement that she made okay. it was a collaboration between herself and Lynn no need to yell. That's no need to yell. Everybody calm down. It's just a freaking book. I'm okay. Just settle down. It sounds like miscommunication all the way around. Nobody was trying to do anything predictive or trying to hurt anybody. I mean, it's it's, it's a little. We can fix this. Not a big deal. Okay. We don't need to be at each other's throats. We're all here trying to do the same thing. Okay. I don't like words being put in my mouth. Uh, and I didn't I never, put words in anybody's mouth. I, know, I was going based yell. on the facts that happened. I know, we just don't have to yell at each other. Well, I was being talked over, so I talked Sorry. over. So, somebody walk through how this problem is going to be solved. It's going to come up at the next board meeting, is that the, the understanding? Yeah, what's coming up at the next board meeting is about um, for the board to have discussion over the novel sets that have not been approved curriculum um, that were grandfathered in if there's concerns about whether they should go through the curriculum process or not. That's what the board needs to decide as a whole. Um, and then um, what I'm being told, or what I, I'm not being told, what I'm hearing specifically is that um, I Will stop taking calls, fielding calls, and answering questions from administration. I, I will no longer do that. I will just wait for them to bring everything to our once a month board meeting and we can have solutions then. Okay? So that's, um, I, I have I'm no not problem saying doing that, that. You can't take phone calls. Mm. And, okay. You can have a conversation with somebody, absolutely. You just can't give just, individual just direction. Sit, I this. did not give individual direction. Or even the... Okay. It was brought to me. I think it should be tabled. And I said, I don't think it's fair for those other two teachers. I, I think this is just... And then it was... But this book hasn't been approved. And there, there was... A, the conversation was a long conversation. It wasn't a quick get rid of the book because I didn't feel the other teacher, two teachers needed to be penalized because they did follow a procedure and they did follow protocol and they did get the parents' authorizations. Correct. 
but given the content of, well, the book hasn't been, you know, it didn't go through curriculum and it was grandfathered in and it's been in the district for years. My question was, that seems really odd. It was just published in 18. Regardless, the concern was we have all these novel sets that haven't been approved. And I said, well, then we should discuss it with the board. Yeah, and that then was, that administration was felt that it was in the best interest of the district to just table the book, let's run it through curriculum because it's already gone through it and it's coming to the board for approval at April's meeting. The problem was resolved by the process that's set in place. So um, from this point forward, I just won't field calls. Everything can come to board meetings and we'll go that direction. And I'll just ask from administration that if I send an email, please respond via email. So that, you know, it's crystal clear what's said and where it goes from there. Okay. Okay. Yep. I, I do feel like I need to say, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, Michelle, but um, Lynn is pretty adamant that she was not the one to bring the idea to table the book. Okay. So. Um, we can agree to disagree on that. Okay. Um, I just, like I said, our conversation was quite long. So it's, I will agree to disagree. Hopefully we can avoid these kind of chaotic situations in the future. Can, can I um, just uh, ha I have an ask, I guess, of the board. One of the things that I think is sometimes problematic is we have, because you guys have been so open to our community, which is great, and people are really comfortable talking to all of you. Um, we definitely are having a lot of situations where Patrons are not talking to the teacher, not talking to the principal, not talking to us, and going straight to the board. It would be really helpful if every time that happens, the, the response is, please talk to the teacher, please, whoever the person is that needs to be able to deal with it so that we can follow our processes. Then if they weren't satisfied after the process is followed, then it naturally comes to the full board. Well, you, Lisa, that's the first email I've gotten since you've been in that position. So yeah. that has not been happening over here. Right. And here's the other thing is we represent the people. The people should come directly to us. They voted us in. And that's why we're here. And sometimes they come to us because they don't feel like they're being heard or they haven't been heard. But you can look in my email. I have always put them back to the chain of command. Every single time, not once have I not done that. And it wasn't done this time either. And in, in respect to the emails that I received, the, the, the theme was, when was this book approved? Mm -hmm. So I asked the question, when was this book approved? And then I got a phone call. So I didn't ask for this book to be pulled. I didn't ask for any of this. I just asked, when was it approved? And because that's what the constituent asked of me. The, they didn't ask for this book to be pulled. In fact, they had already gone to the teacher and requested additional books mm -hmm. because their child wasn't, their, their children wasn't, weren't going to read that book based on their whatever. Yeah, the email so, didn't ask that either. They just wanted to know how, how it came to be. It, yeah, they never said it, anything about pulling the book right. or nothing. So. The one family they said had already made uh, arrangements with the other teacher. Um, they, yeah, that was that right. was the email and email I got to you. They just wanted to know. So in that original email that you read, um, in addition to the question about the book, there was um, an allegation about um, a social studies lesson. Hey. And um, which did that did not happen, and I know we. Um, well, you sent me the um, presentation. The presentation, and um, that was the end of that. Yeah, I just I want mean, to say it, that out loud because people. This is recorded, and people heard the whole email that you read. So I just want to. I just want to make sure the patrons know we followed up on that part too. Right, which you did. You sent me that, that uh, the presentation, and there wasn't anything to what the parent alluded to. So. It was a done deal. It was a done deal. Yeah. Because yeah. you answered my question. Mm -hmm. So that's I mean that's 
that's the end of that. So do we have any further discussion on the novel The Truth is Told by Mason Buttle? No? All right. Um, Randy, is there anything further about The Truth as Told by Mason Buttle you'd like to... No, it's an amazing book. Discussion? After all this came about, I read it, and it's a fantastic book, so I just hope that our kids get the opportunity to read it. Okay. Well, on that note, I'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. It's 6.11. Thank you.